So yeah, you're one of the people who know, knew Gaza very well, I guess, from your time playing with him. And reasonably well, reasonably yeah. well. So yeah. what was he like as a man? Um, very generous. Uh, a professional that, that wanted to train longer than anybody, I'll give him that, you know. Um, wonderful character that would do anything for you. He's one of those. As I say, um, you know, helped me out on many an occasion when, we, when I've asked things of him. Uh, and he doesn't forget. And that's, that's the one thing about him. And uh, I think he's one of these characters that's generally loved all over the country, you know. We don't get many players like that these days. Why do you think that is? Well, I think he's certainly been a one-off in ability-wise, you know. He's, uh, in my time with England, uh, having uh, played or since managed and coached with the national team, I've not seen anyone like Paul, you know, ability-wise, you know. And I think we've been blessed to have a player of his magnitude on these shores, and I don't think we've had one since. Uh, you mentioned your time as a manager. How do you think you would have coped managing Gaza? That would have been hard work, I've got to tell you that. Um, I'd prefer to play with him than manage him, to be honest with you. He's one of these, he's like a naughty schoolboy, basically. I think the likes of Terry Venables and uh, Bobby Robson handled him fantastically well, you know, and uh, probably Terry got the best out of him as a manager. So It's 19 years to the day that um, it, um, Euro 96 kicked off. Yes. Uh, and now, what were your memories of that time and what impact did Gaza have on that tournament? Well, <laughs> I think, you know, he is the absolute standout footballer of that generation. Uh, his goal at Wembley against Scotland is something that gets played time and time again. Um, and it probably playing in an environment that was probably the best environment I and probably most of the squad at that time and probably the best team, the best England team I'd ever played in. Certainly the performance against the Dutch was scintillating, you know, and uh, as I say, he's an outstanding uh, professional and an outstanding man. And, you know, for, for the likes of myself, it's an absolute honour and a pleasure but to be here tonight supporting this evening for him. We're not far off getting the first £100 million player. How much do you think Gaza would be worth now? Probably priceless, to be fair. And, he, and looking back over his career, probably injury blighted his career somewhat, you know. But um, I think when you look back over his career and, and look at the values of paid for players nowadays, he's, he's up there with the best. I mean, I view him as the best England player of, of certainly my generation and the generation since. Um, I struggle to name anyone better than him and I go back to the, probably the, the, the uh, World Cup winning side really of 66 and maybe only Bobby Charlton you would look at would have that sort of impact. Do you think at his peak he'd be able to slip into any side in the Premiership now? <laughs> That's the biggest understatement ever, you know, he could comfortably handle not only any team in the Premier League, he would probably fit into a Barcelona side and that's probably the biggest compliment I could pay to him. Uh, now, also, we see um, footage from Italian 90 as well um, in, the, in the documentary. Uh, what are your memories of that? Well, my first uh, and only World Cup finals, and obviously I think Paul's as well. I don't think he played in another World Cup finals. Uh, it was one where we went with little expectation, if you like. I think, it, looking back now, it was almost a pre-runner to the Premier League and, and you know, football just took off basically I think um, after that tournament that's how I saw it anyway I think the popularity of football and the likes of Paul and Des Walker really and David Platt really had a, a big impact and put themselves on the map after that. Uh, he just missed on the uh, on the peak of the Premier League as well um, how do you think you would have coped in, in the Premier League with the faster pace that we hear it's all about at the moment? He, he thinks in his mind you know I mean as an individual he had up, upper body strength um, he could think quicker than any other player and the ball stuck to his feet, you know, he was an incredible player, he, he could tackle, he could edit, he could score goals, he had everything about his game, you know, the complete midfield player. And finally, um, given, uh, given that you played with him, who does he compare with nowadays? Are there any players that you can see either in this country or internationally that are like Gaza? I, I don't see too many that, that uh, have got all the attributes that he's got. Some have got some attributes. The Steven Gerrard's got some of his attributes, if you like, you know. But I think with Gaza, Gaza had that real arrogance as well, you know. No matter who he went up against in the world, he felt he was better than they were, you know. And, uh, and quite often he was. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!